零一二零零一一九七三八八，传播佛法，救护生命。为佛陀的大慈悲，就在生命电视台。嗯、接下来，请收看《大宝法王慈悲开示》。I'm very happy to be together with you at this gathering that was organized by Kamadodun Kunchabling and. And、uh, very happy to see you all. Welcome. Okay. 
In 2008, I had the opportunity to visit the actual Dharma Center of Gagyu d r o d u n g u n c h a b and uh, it was very crowded because I, I, I heard that not even all of the members can fit inside the Dharma Center. There are so many members, and so I think uh, Lamala gained some experience from that occasion. And this time, he decided to rent a hall for the talk. <laughs> and uh, I heard that there was a talk today, but I didn't hear what the topic was. And Lamala, <laughs> Lamala told me there's no special topic. I could uh, teach about whatever I wanted. I could talk about whatever I wanted. So since there's no special topic, then it becomes kind of tricky. I don't quite know what to say. I think I, the translator, don't know what to say. I might have misphrased that a little bit, but. That the Chidan don't has r e a n y that b e n e f i formal the has read that the Loma, the has r e a Nanjue Lobjon Sene, that you think him on which I have done the period. And says that it is the formal of the Siena, somebody of the Chengdo. Lasso? In an Arashida, the person Koran formal Shira means an formal shell, the Galera Stua. Lasso? And then you sign him. And it's done game. And then Kazra Gangam Bukundi Juduba. Ani di enta kanda <hesitation> chan bi jiga di liya mi se jaba yoda bi stu sa di yare, a ta na si ko mi si se na ani nu shua liya <hesitation> pue ga na ba sang ge bi ta chi ta ngi sang ge ti ba, ani di na ni pue na ba sang ge bi ti ba bi ngi na shu yoda ti ani bi stu sa di yare, ani di ngi sa ni ki an su na lo ni ka si liya ti ti. Konda dan jeba yeba yeba samar be, ta dus chari yare sam, dus chenga do, a ndri ndu san di ju zel dene, a ne ngara ine a ta ta do bodo si chi ge gub lia, ge ge gub ni zi lia, ma do do tu yo ma ne, ta di na ne a mer gul lia ta ti, ta di di sum bere, a che sa mi se ge, ka chu e. Ngege samle na lo lea, kawa chudu pal ta anji amere gege, jeba ti samar wea ta chi lemeo jeba ti sabo yewe inza, ti jege kyun zene te ne ara ine a yane a ndu te, yon tu pere chik, le chik <hesitation> chung wadu chik lea ngun zidu shu yue shu yai, la sam. I think most of the attendees of today's talk are uh, students of Buddhism, and therefore I thought it would be suitable to teach on some kind of formal topic. But the challenge is that I myself am not a very formal person, so we'll see what happens with regard to that. But in general, it is wonderful to be here in the United States of America, because as you know. His Holiness the 16th g e l o n k a r m a p a had a very strong connection with the United States of America, and I think that he was one of the earliest masters to strongly propagate the teachings of Buddha Dharma in the West. And so, furthermore, I think that there are many uh, of the students gathered here who had a very strong connection with His Holiness the 16th g e l o n k a r m a p a In terms of my own travels. I've only been able to visit two foreign countries so far in my life, the United States, of course, being one of them. And uh, since the United States had such a profound connection with His Holiness the 16th Gyalong Karmapa, I personally uh, regard the U.S. as a place that uh, would be very beneficial for me to return to again and again. Ah, s u m b a r right? Yeah, right. And so this, of course, being my third trip to the United States.
અને ตาเจ็บเจ็บแล้วก็ก็ช่วยเพื่อขันธ์จอนยาตากันตาจีเอ่อตาลงตาตงทาตงทาก็ยิงเลยซอมบะเบตาตงทาก็ยิงเลยอ
Of course, one of the ways that we practice the Dharma is in the context of formal practice. And formal practice is something that we need to make time for. We might set aside time in the morning or in the evening. Uh, but some formal practice, I think, is very good to do because it's similar to a time of day where we take to recharge our batteries. Throughout the day, we become very exhausted. We have many things to do. Our minds become quite disturbed sometimes due to all of this. And therefore, it's very helpful to set aside some time where we're only concentrating on relaxing our body and mind. This helps to pacify our mind and to tame our mind. And I think that for this reason, formal practice is very important. ดิสมาจิชูชวาระชาเทซัมมาอิมเปเชเทซัมตะมะเนบะตะเตเลฮลาบะจิกะรูชุมเตเตอาชิยาอะจุซัมตงกะเตชิบจิเกจิมชาเ
working with and learning to deal with our emotions becomes an important purpose of our practice. Spiritual practice, commercial purpose, meditation chair, relax yoga chair, relax chair, and the spiritual massage do sometimes ที่ช่วยเดี๋ยวจริงๆดิขัดช่วยที่กิบุนรู้จริงอย่าไปเงียบเอาอะไรมาสิแล้วสิแต่ที่อินเทนซีฟเอ็กซ์ซ์ไซ
in particular, Dharma practice actually has something to do with transforming our own personal character or our own personality, our personal nature. And that can be difficult. Of course, we have the recent observations from modern science that talk about how meditation can change our brain and so forth, but I think what the Dharma is really talking about is more difficult than that. It goes to changing our character. Uh, sometimes we might have the defense, well, I'm not going to change this because this is who I am. That's my character. So I'm not going to change that. But Dharma practice says, no, that's not uh, tenable. That's not a tenable defense, as it were. Because if your character involves flaws that are harmful, then the Dharma says that is what needs to be transformed. That's what you need to put effort into letting go. And that's a difficult process. It's not easy, it can be intense. Mm, ตันเดนเดจิชีกะสมนะมีรินชีตันมีสมเนี่ยยัวชิบีมีนะตันมีชีกะสมนะตันเดเลพาร์ซอนาลิตี้เดเลยัวนรัชอุมามีจิคอน
a future ahead of us full of potential, full of positive potential. For example, we might not be someone who is well-liked at present, but if we transform our habits, then we can be actually someone who is liked and regarded well by others. But to get to this level or state of transformation, it's not going to benefit if we just try to change our body alone or our physical demeanor. If we just were to rely on engaging in rituals and doing mudras from a physical perspective, it would be difficult to bring a true transformation about. In the same way, it's not beneficial to just change our speech to saying mantras or uttering the word compassion over and over again and so forth. What we really need to work on is our mind. That's the main thing. Through changing our mind, we change our personality. Through changing our personality, we change our life. And that is what we should put effort toward. ตัดดิตะกินโยมอซาดิจิกะรเวจิเตเลยาจิมิทุนบิชอดะมิทุนบิชอสมรเวตะจิเอ่อกะรเวลองดาอืมทุนชอกไปยืนเดนซิยาเ
know that we're talking about a different situation than being controlled by our kleshas, which is usually the way that we relate to them. Usually it's the kleshas controlling us and not us controlling the kleshas. If we're completely overwhelmed by and governed by our mental afflictions, then it's going to be very difficult for us to bring them to the path or take them as the path. So in order for us to be able to do that, we need to have some control over our kleshas, our disturbing mental events. And that is something that comes about through gradual process. It's very difficult to gain this ability from the very beginning. So ultimately we have to be able to get to a place where we have the ability uh, to relate to our anger in a way that we're not just at the whim of our own anger. So if, we're in a, if we come to the point where we can choose between getting angry or not getting angry, then that means we've gained some ability. But if we fall into anger uh, in a helpless way, where we don't have any choice or control whatsoever, then we still have not gained any power of our own or ability in relation to our emotions. Chidan <laughs> Collect distance and kind of almost like inseparable and revulsion Chi 
You could say that there are two stages of relating to the kleshas or working with the kleshas. Uh, and whenever I say kleshas, for those of you who aren't familiar, we could say that means mental afflictions or disturbing emotions, destructive emotions, negative mental patterns, and so forth, is all klesha. So when we relate to the kleshas or try to transform the kleshas, there are two basic stages. We could call one an outer stage and one an inner stage. Uh, the outer stage involves the formal aspect where we engage in meditation, we engage in the forms and following the instructions of meditation, we engage in study as well as reflection and contemplation about the meaning of uh, what we have been taught. And through this, we collect the methods or tools that serve as antidotes or that will serve as antidotes to the mental afflictions. At the second stage, that's the more internal level where we actually recognize the mental afflictions that are present in our own mind stream. Having recognized them, we can then start to set some distance between our own mind on the one hand and the mental affliction on the other hand. And it's very important to have this distance be present between our mind and the mental afflictions as a result of our practice. If we practice and practice, but still end up in a place where there's no separation between our mind and the mental afflictions at all, no distance between these two things at all, then our practice really isn't uh, penetrating through to the key point. So to help this along, to help there to eventually, through our practice, um, arise a distance between our mind and the mental afflictions, we need what is called revulsion. We need some attitude of disgust or uh, revulsion toward our mental afflictions and a desire to part from them. If we don't have that revulsion, then it's going to be difficult for us to get past the mere outer stage of just going through the forms of meditation it will be difficult for us to arrive at the ultimate purpose of meditation in terms of parting from our mental afflictions. mental emotion, the disturbing emotion, and that で、だって、ちょうど3番目みね。だな、ちしらんで、え、純正純。もうちょいあれ、ラルプシ。あ、どうしゃさで、ティギだし、リニエギ、よわちゃうしょ、ディスカラハブシュ。ラサ。だってね、
Yomu karı şu şehir şey bine ya. Da dine guazam ne? Yemba diyarım. Ki şey o. Da dine ne bas ki yamın o da. Nasıl? Kan tarayan. Nasıl ki? Dine kalbi hacı. Dealing with. Mental emotion. Samre. Da hacı disturb emotion. Dine çevre kalbi ya. Tam. Tam bu kadar successful çağda kalkmışlar. Ci gega tabiatlar ci. Nasıl? Tadi, ci mizi azul ya, karşıya. Mutu ne? Ci karşıya. Yamlin çak. Tadi ne ki ci düba çak bu senin dağdo, mevba çak bu senin dağdo. Ci ne ki ning dobi ci koyadı, encouragement ci koyadı. Ci, ci ki, pam kadar bu ci. Pamuk aja cuma ini bina, ane yang ker kerja aja. Benda cik pamuk saya ini tanda ujut cikar try. You need to try ten times. Nasib. Ten times you lose. One hundred times sama ribet ada dia juga. Tadi kerja. Tadi juga ada siapa juga yang macam itu. Nasib. Tadi juga ada. Eh, mungkin aku cik tanggul ni. Tadi cik chan awas. Tadi ni sum. Tapi cik kerja. Not successful. Tadi. अन्य भाजी दात साम शाहजार में लासा अंदर इंडिया से जेम ऐसे ही कदू ही नहीं आ अन्य जी सोशल की न्यूमो भी वाले जो गो मुगुरु सामने बच्चे गो गुरने से मत अन्य सरेंडर से मत बच्चे अंदर जो चीज मुगुरु सामने जो चीज सामने को आप कैसे मिस बाउइंग डाउन ना बाउइंग डाउन ताई ना आज उधर ताई जरा दूजी से मत ओके People have different emotional makeups. So that means that uh, what's a strong mental affliction for some person isn't necessarily going to be the strongest mental affliction for a different person. Basically, the Buddhist teachings talk about three poisons of the mind, pointing to the three root mental afflictions of desire, aggression, and bewilderment, which of course can be translated in various ways, and these three in turn have many subcategories in the teachings, but these three are kind of like the central, um, the central network for all of the other disturbing emotions or mental afflictions to develop. If we look at aggression or anger in particular, we can see that it is perhaps the easiest mental affliction to recognize and also the easiest to identify as problematic. But if we look at desire, it might be a little bit difficult to recognize, more difficult to recognize, and particularly sometimes uh, more difficult to identify as problematic in comparison with anger. And then with regard to bewilderment or uh, ignorance, uh, that is a mental affliction that is taught a lot about in the texts and by the great masters, but just teachings from texts and masters aren't enough we need to recognize its presence in our own mind stream, in our own experience, and bring that into our practice. But that in turn is very difficult. Uh, it can run very deep in our mind stream. And so, uh, there is no uh, uniformity with regard to which kleshas are the strongest in which individuals. Uh, in any case, when we set about to transform our negative emotions, it's very difficult to gain success, as it were, or to gain victory from the very beginning. And therefore, what's really important is for us to have a strong sense of resolve, have a strength of heart, and have a sense of encouragement and um, fortitude when we set about to work with our mind and work with our emotions because what will inevitably happen is that we're going to experience defeat. We're going to try to relinquish our negative emotions or try to transform our mind and we're going to fail. Uh, so we should have the attitude that if we fail 10 times, that just means we're going to try 100 more times. Um, if we didn't give rise to that firm encouragement of ourselves in the beginning, 
then it might be challenging because maybe we could take one defeat uh, or one instance of failure, but then after two or three instances of, fa of failure, we'd be pretty much ready to give up. So uh, having this strong resolve in the beginning and an attitude that we're not just going to completely uh, bow down to our negative emotions is very important. <laughs> で、地上の数名みんな。ランキング、ランキング。し、カラスレ、トゥンショーで、ユンデンソムレ、サンビエンで、ヤゲンワンダ。レラルシ、パジヨンゴドウス。レラワンドウチ。ラソ。パジヨ
Telea, Takashu, Shatsarek, Sambazo Mahimba. Jangi, and a contact dung, dung, a simsy, Saran Rando, Anna, Taka, the simsy puributi, Chasher, Gurje. That rigid tone, under Zawa, Sumeruji, in a pair with the Jiji, which go out. The Jiomer said, That they understand that they are. And then they will give Niji Tia. Then she has a did you saw you have a summer way? Simply a Tamzelia. And then they will say, Don't eat Jing, Simply a Tamzelia. And then she has a gongwati that gets him some chatty or what? Last thing you stand dig you there, then that is the basin. What they are Yagan Roga, the Susan, but the basin Yagan Roga to say. That day, that is which I may in the Wonder Lunge in the Roches, the Sundu, that's a Wonder Lund in the Wings. That's up. It seems that we're running out of time for our session together. So the main point that I wanted to make about compassion uh, is that compassion is a little bit more than just sympathy or even just empathy. It's something that entails more dedication and a heart that entails more involvement in action. So compassion isn't just the mind or heart that understands or feels for the suffering of others or has um, warm sentiments toward others. Rather, compassion is the mind that realizes that the sufferings of others are actually a part of oneself. And within that attitude, the heart that bears unbearable love for sentient beings. So, therefore, to meditate on compassion is to further cultivate and nurture this awareness that one's happiness and suffering is the happiness and suffering of all sentient beings. The happiness and suffering of all sentient beings is the happiness and suffering of oneself. And when we meditate in this way, our compassion will increase, and it will increase step by step in gradual stages. So that is what I'd like to say about compassion for this morning. And additionally, I've been requested to give a lung or a scriptural transmission for uh, the text that I composed on uh, the preliminary practices, brief recitations for the four preliminary <laughs> practices. So I will recite this scriptural transmission now. <laughs> Sang Tamanin 